didn't take care of the business that he should have. And I think uh, Cal- was it California won a party. That's his shit. Okay. And I think that I think that came from one of his projects. So it's all, you know, it's all connected, Doc. It's all Man. connected. If this ain't the dopest West Coast hip hop podcast on the planet, I don't know what is. Everybody's tripping out there if they don't agree with me. But um, we have a last question and unknown. Is, I think I heard his voice in the background. Hey, Becky, uh, get, get, get yeah, back get, so he could probably answer this. We, he could probably answer this without showing his face. Guitarist 888 says, excellent podcast, fellas. Speaking of electro, what drum machine did unknown use for Let's Jam? Was it 808 or 909? And how yeah. did you guys do the panning effects on a recording while the song is playing? They got I can read it over again if you need me to. I'm, what what drum machine did did you use on uh, was Less it Jam? Let's Jam. Was that an 808 on Let's Jam? Or 909? Or 909. He's whistling. His brain is aching. <laughs> He's thinking. Uh, Let's Jam. A serious hip hop fan right here asking this question, boy. You got just. I think he'll take a shit. You better hurry up. <laughs> His face like he about to take a dump. All right, maybe he can answer this next question. Hold on, hold on. Uh, they said, "Oh, go ahead." It says drum uh, se- se- sequential circuit drumatic and and the DX Oberheim DX. Did we see un- unknown had connections straight to Oberheim? He got he used to get custom sounds made for his his uh, his drum machine. Yeah, he got him from Oberheim. He would tell him, "Hey, we need this sound." They would they would d- digitize a, a chip for him, and uh, he dropped the shit in there. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 he, he, he had he even had uh, scratching effects put onto the DMX, I mean, the DX and DMX. Hmm. Second part of the question was, how did you guys do the panning effects on a recording while the song is playing? Oh, that was easy. We just pan. We back then we manually panned it. Somebody would sit there and go back and forth. That was just something we did. We was the auto pan. Yeah, we was the auto pan back then, Doc. Yeah, it wasn't no, it wasn't no shit. Nah, nah. We uh, it was that was real shit. Yeah. There it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you ever? Last question is uh, Derek DJ Ism. Did you ever have to deal with getting samples cleared back then? Uh, not really, because I record crew didn't really sample that much. We never really did a lot of samples. Um, what a time! The machine, the sample huh? Second back right, and and yeah, like you said, uh, back then. Oh yeah, we. I'm sorry, we did, we did. We had to we had to sample a Bugs Bunny. Get a clear a Bugs Bunny sample on our CBS album. Um, it was, I think it was Daffy Duck, uh, a Daffy Duck sample from Warner, from uh, Warner Brothers, um, music maestro, some shit like that. We had to, we had to clear that shit. Other than that, that was it. Back then, a sampler for us, a sampler only makes sample in one or two seconds. It was like, dude, maximum. It, it wasn't until later on we started seeing, you know, the uh, the Kai samplers would give you maybe four seconds or eight seconds at the most, and you had to put them on two different keys back then. You couldn't just hold it, you know. Then, by the time we got to the um, SP twelve hundreds, and even that, that's not a long ass sample at all. Right. Damn. It was, you know, on on the SP twelve, like unknown said, you had to do a. You might have four seconds the whole thing once you trunk. Oh. Yeah, for the whole for the whole oh. keyboard. So you had to grab every sound individually. You had a a sound for the a second for the snare. A second for the hi hat, a second for the kick, and uh, that's it. And that's it. And if you're lucky, you do it in the middle second, you might get two. But yeah, it was a lot different back then, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Said he would. They would play the records at 78, speed it up, and then get it in on the sample and slow it down in the drum machine. Ooh, these kids don't know how good they got it, dude. With this <laughs> fruity <laughs> loops and <laughs> come on, man. They have no idea. <laughs> if they knew how with the shit we had to go through, they they would have got to join the army. Anyway, 
and that's what made it real quick. We'll wrap it up with this. That's what made hip hop so special back then, because not everybody could fucking do it. You You're had right. to have the talent. You had to have the knowledge and the patience to fucking cut and paste and do all that shit you guys were just talking. Nowadays, you could literally sit in front of a computer and learn how to do it in 30 minutes. And you had to have the money. Money kept a lot of people out of hip hop. Money, if you didn't know how to do shit, like we had, I had a little, I had a few dollars from the club. Uh, I had good credit. You know, they had a thing. I remember when I bought my last SP1200, they had a thing at uh, Nadine's Music. Walk in there and give them my ID, and you walk out with a drum machine. I, gave, I wouldn't got a, never mind. Anyway, I got me a drum machine. <laughs> okay. Man. Different times, folk. Different times. Man, always a pleasure doing this show with you, Lonzo. Any last words? And thank you so much for, you know, just showing love and, and giving us, uh, you know, the true West Coast hip hop history. Because like I said, I don't know any other podcast doing this right now. The East Coast is getting covered. I don't know if the South is getting covered too much. I definitely know the West Coast ain't getting covered as much as they should. You know We're what? the only ones right now doing it. I just I, I just reached out for one of my buddies from, from uh, Senator Steve Bradford uh, here in the state of California. And uh, we want to do a... Um, they're going to honor some of the players from the West Coast on the Senate floor in Sacramento uh, mid-August. And we've been, I'm, on, I'm part of a committee. It was my idea, but it kind of got tossed to a committee, some other folks. And I had to explain to them that we have, we, you, we cannot just give uh, recognition to the artists that people know. There are too many people behind the scenes that did too much for, for West Coast hip hop not to be recognized. And the more, the more artists you recognize from the East Coast is going to um, minimize the people from the West Coast. So I have no problem. I love everybody. I ain't got no problem with nobody East Coast or West Coast. But I think it's we. I think we have to focus on our own thing and stop trying to include everybody. Give our give our boys some shine. Give our people some shine because they deserve it. They put a lot of work into it. Kelvin, Greg Mack. Um, D Barnes, JJ Fad. I mean, they get looked over for everything. JJ Fad is probably one of the workingest groups on the West Coast. Oh, they're still killing. I saw them less than a year ago in Long Beach and they killed it, dog. JJ Fad works more than any, probably works more than any rap act. I don't know how much money they how much money they get, but they hit the stage more than anybody else. Why? Because their music is up tempo, it's fun and non threatening. They can go anywhere and party with anybody, and everybody loves them, and that makes a big difference. So yeah, JJ Fad, uh, Violet Brown, who I've been on, ha had on my show before, she was the reason why we got into Warehouse Records. Okay, no, she's not an artist, but she's well respected and well known by all the artists. So to overlook these people, continue to overlook these people, and keep giving the same people the same accolades like nobody else did nothing, it's bullshit. And as long as I can help it, it ain't gonna happen. So anyway, folks, that's my what. Dog. I Always a pleasure, man. Much love, folks. See y'all next Tuesday. Peace.